Welcome back to the Closure Cones walkthrough, number 16, covering atoms. So in the last video, we got introduced to refs, and now we're going to learn about a special case of refs called atoms. So let's look at the very first thing here. We're defining an atomic clock atom, and it's going to be an atom with a value 0. So here we see atoms are like refs. We can deref the variable atomic clock and that's going to return back the value of the atom which is zero at the moment and you can change so here we see a swap function with an exclamation mark to indicate that it's having side effects and it's going to provide a function to call and it's going to be applied to the value of this atom and the result is going to be the new value of the atom. So what is the value here after this swap? It will be uh, 0 plus plus 1 thanks to the ink function. So we should see it ends up being 1. Right. Next. So swapping requires no transaction. Did you notice that before? With refs, we had to do all of the changes inside of a do sync call. But here, we can call directly these functions, swap, and provide new values. So, what should we do? Can we provide a value directly like this? Mm. Nope, we have to provide a function. So, what would we do to increment it up to five? We could just say plus four. Yep, that worked. Cool. So, any number of arguments might happen during a swap. So here we're doing atomic clock, uh, swapping with the plus function and all of these arguments. So the value of atomic clock coming in is 5. So we need to add 5 to all of this. So 5 and 5 is 10. 14, 17, 19, 20. We should get 20. Yep, we got it. Cool. So atomic atoms are atomic. <laughs> Look at this, a new function here, compare and set. So it's going to take a look at this atomic clock uh, atom and compare it to the value 100. If this matches, then it's going to change the value to this. But in this case, if it tries to compare atomic clock with 100, that's going to fail because the value is really 20 at this time. So and for that reason, I think this is not going to change the value at all. The 20 will remain. Yep. Okay, but we'll see compare and set here in another case. Yeah, when your expectations are aligned with reality, things proceed that way. So in this case, fin really does become the new value of the atomic clock atom. And what would we have to provide here to make that so? Well, the first parameter is our atom, atomic clock. And here's the value we want to compare it to. So the value we want to compare it to right now is 20. We know at this time that will succeed. And what do we want to return? We want to return back fin. That's that should be the new value of atomic clock. And sure enough, that works. Cool, so here we got to learn about atoms, which are very useful when you're only dealing with a single value, but you wanna make atomic changes to it without having to worry about transactions. Okay, cool. Well, I hope you're excited because next video is gonna cover something really near and dear to my heart, macros. So. Stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.